नमस्कार द फैक्ट इज दैट द वाइट कॉलर्ड मिडिल क्लास पीपल लिविंग इन सिटीज ऑफन डोंट हैव अ क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हाउ द मेजोरिटी ऑफ द इंडियन पॉपुलेशन लिवस एट द मोस्ट दे हैव सीन द लाइफ ऑफ द पुअर हु लिव इन स्लम्स फॉर द लैक ऑफ एक्सेस टू एजुकेशन एंड डिसेंट जॉब्स बट मोस्ट ऑफ अस हैव नो आइडिया ऑफ द मिजरेबल लाइव लेड बाय द मार्जिनलाइज who were denied their rights systematically for centuries and then we come across some books that make us aware of that reality and we are shaken we are going to discuss one such book today this book is athwanin se pakshi a birds of memory by pralhad son kamle welcome to the 60th episode of granth yatra Pralhad Irbaji Sonkamre was born in the Sullari village of Udgir block in Usmanabad district of Maharashtra in 1943. Today, this village is part of Jalkot block in Latur district. Sonkamre completed his graduation from Milind College in Aurangabad and his masters in English literature from Maratwada University. Later, he completed an LLB from Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar Law College. He joined Dr Ambedkar College of Arts and Commerce as a professor of English in 1966 and retired from this college as principal after 1988. Son Kamre wrote two other books. This is how it is, a collection of essays and We went cape, a book of criticism. But the book that he is well known for and which is a testimony to the power of his pen is the collection of his autobiographical writings Atwan Inse Pakshi. This was first published in the form of a book in 1979. After his parents pass away in his childhood, 6-year-old Pralhad's older sister Akka takes him to her home in the village called Chera. Although he migrates just to the adjoining block, he is considered an outsider. Extreme poverty, his orphan status and being born in a caste that is considered untouchable by the society adds to his misery. This book contains Son Kamre's memories from this period of his childhood and his life until he was able to complete his education and secure a job. He writes in an extremely lucid and natural style using the language spoken by people belonging to the Mahar caste in Marathwada region of Maharashtra. This makes his writings lively and hard hitting. As a child, Pralhad never gets enough to eat and has to live on leftover food. His sister works hard to provide for her family but whatever she can bring home has to be shared with her young kids. After working all day in the fields of the so-called upper castes, they would receive some grains, often the corn specked by birds or infested with worms. If the grain was milled and the flour cooked as bread, it was never enough for everyone in the family. So they would add a lot of water to it. and boil it into a porridge to fill their hungry bellies pralhad's mother had taken him to the holy shrine of pandhapur as a baby and so he avoided eating the meat of abandoned dead animals when such meat was cooked at home he would just drink some water and go to bed son kamre writes whenever there was no bread i would roast the hard seeds of tamarind and eat them or i would soak them in water and eat them that's how we carried out at my sister's home she felt bad because i wouldn't grab the chance of eating my tummy full whenever there was meat of a dead animal available but also because there would be nothing else which she could cook and give me instead at times when he ate these tamarind seeds or the tender corns of millets and drank water to feel satiated he would develop stomach ache at school his classmates brought lunch boxes from home pralhad of course had nothing with him to eat he would then keep sitting in his classroom with an empty stomach after school he would walk several miles to his home in chera work at other people's homes in anticipation of some bread and late in the evening get some leftovers to eat in the morning Before going to school Pralhad would visit the homes of the Brahmin families to collect the cow dung from their cattle sheds The servants in those households would then call out to the women in the homes Give Parlu Maharaj some food But the women there were very stingy 
they would not budge. Even when they did, they would throw some food towards him. The darkness made it hard to see. At times, the food landed in the plate of leaves he carried. At times, it would fall on the ground in the dirt. But I would pick it up and eat. I had no choice, he writes. Most of the time, he had no food. And even when it was served, it would be served near the place that was used by children for relieving themselves or near the drain. Prahlad had no alternative but to accept food in whatever manner he was offered it in order to live. Son Kamre narrates incidents such as having to drag and dispose of the rotting body of a dog in the hope of getting half a piece of bread. Or when he was served in the plate of a leper after having walked for miles to another village to accompany an upper caste person. Such incidents make the readers shudder. We are left stunned with these descriptions because the matter-of-fact narrative makes no attempt to arouse the reader's pity for the narrator. Through his writings, Son Kamre simply makes the readers aware that people belonging to the so-called untouchable castes were compelled to lead such wretched lives because of the extremely debilitating class structure that had deep roots in the society. Son Kamre's style of writing is highly restrained, respectful and mature. Speaking about Son Kamre's writings, the noted critic G.M. Pawar has said, Since this expression emerges from the writer's classic, affable and pure nature, it has an inherent sweetness to it. The contrast between the scorching intensity of experiences, their intense harshness on the one hand, and the writer's mild, quiet and unassuming nature on the other hand takes the reader to several layers of contemplation. It unknowingly makes him introspect. When Prahlad completes fourth grade from the school in Chera, the husband of his other sister who lives in Jagarpur tempts him with the promise of offering him a shop to run and takes him with him to his home. In reality, however, he makes Prahlad tend to camels, sell chilies and work in the fields of others. Yet, more than the sorrow of being duped and the hard work, Prahlad is upset at having no access to school. Fortunately for him, his teacher Vinayak Rao from his former school learns about his plight and summons him. Despite a gap of six months, he helps Prahlad get admitted to a school and he is able to resume his education. Son Kamre writes, None of the students from Chera who had been attending school since the sowing season during the rains were able to pass the examination. Except for Prabhakar, the priest's son, they all were surprised. For one, I had read an English lesson though I had not yet learned the alphabet. And second, I secured 187 marks and passed the exam within a month of joining the school. I then cleared the annual exam too and my derailed train was back on the tracks. Prahlad continues his education with always an empty stomach, struggling with diseases such as jaundice and gastroenteritis, and engaged in chores such as picking up bones of dead animals, collecting the bark of baboon trees, collecting the village garbage. He progresses from the school in Hadolti village to the school in the town of Latur and then to the one in Rajur. Prahlad never has decent clothes to wear while at school. He collects the old, torn and discarded clothes and washes and wears them. Son Kamre writes, Every day I used to go to the Waki river and take a bath. In the morning, there would be a lot of water. I would get drenched, but I did not have any spare clothes. So I would just squeeze the water out from my clothes and wear those soaking, at times smelly clothes to school. I would think, there is a little bit of breeze and the heat in my body will dry them out. But they wouldn't dry quick because it would keep raining and my clothes too were funny. They had a lot of patchwork. I would go and sit on the bench. I would then get sick with cough and cold and then with jaundice. And mind you, this was a regular thing. Wearing of damp clothes causes eczema on his whole body. He then mixes some medicine with salt and oil and applies it to his entire body 
and suffers its painful sting all night. Dealing with all these difficult circumstances, Prahlad passes his matriculation examination. Some students from his village decide to collect donations from the entire village for their college admission fees and Prahlad joins them. He gets admission to Milinda College in Aurangabad and secures a room in the boarding hostel. Son Kamre writes, Somehow I got through. I got to eat every day. This was great fun. Because until then, I had never experienced this. In fact, it would not be wrong to say that I had hardly ever eaten a proper meal before. In his childhood, Prahlad has to not only face perpetual hunger, but had very limited access to drinking water. He would get to drink water from wells if someone took pity and poured water over his cupped hands from a distance. Once, when he is walking from the village of his elder sister to that of his younger sister, he feels extremely thirsty on the way. There is a deep pit on the fallow land that is meant to collect water for the cattle. It is called Chelma in the local dialect. Prahlad is tempted to drink water from the Chelma but is afraid lest someone should spot him. He thought, but I am not committing a robbery. All I am doing is drinking water from this Chelma that has been here in this wilderness for generations and that too because I am thirsty. But at that instant, a man related to the village headman appears from somewhere and shouts at Prahlad, You are not supposed to drink water in this way. If you ever pass this way again, I'll crush you under my feet. He then scoops some water with his hands and throws it away and then draws water with his pot and offers it to his bullock. The incident is a stark example of how the marginalized people were treated worse than animals. The use of the dialect spoken in the Udgir region of Marathwada is an important characteristic of this book. It makes these memories come alive. Phrases such as ripe red marking nut fruits or custard apple with opened eyes help the readers identify with the narrative background. We have with us today Professor Vinod Uparvat to tell us more about this book. Namaskar. Me, Radhagar Dr. Vinod Uparvat. Atonichi Pakshi, Ya Atma Katanata Pariche, Horkat Karundet. Atonichi Pakshi, He Prai Son Kamre and Chat Makatan. लेखक दलित समाजात जर्माला आल्यामुळे जे दुःख दारिद्र्य व अपमान त्यांच्या वाट्याला आले त्यांचे चित्रण या आत्मकथनात आले आहे लेखकाच्या बालपणापासून ते त्यांचा प्राध्यापक होण्यापर्यंतचा प्रवास या पुस्तकांमध्ये येतो सरांचा मी विद्यार्थी आहे त्यामुळे त्यांचा जीवन प्रवास त्यांनी आम्हाला सांगितलेला आहे ते आठवणीचे पक्षी हे आत्मकथन या देशातील समस्त वंचित सुशित पीडित वर्गाचे आत्मकथन आहे जे जगले अनुभवले तेच त्यांनी आपल्या आत्मकथनाच्या माध्यमातून या समाज व्यवस्थेला सांगितले सरांच्या संदर्भामध्ये एक गोष्ट मला आवर्जून या ठिकाणी आठवण म्हणून सांगायची आहे सर जेव्हाही कोणाला भेटत असत तेव्हा ते अतिशय हसत मुखाने समोरच्या व्यक्तीला फुल आणि खडी साखर देत असत फुल आणि खडी साखर देण्याच्या पाठीमागचा सरांचा उद्देश हा सर्वांनाच आवडत होता सरांचा स्वभाव हा अतिशय मन मिळव असा त्यांचा स्वभाव होता आठवणीचे पक्षी या आत्मकथनामध्ये आपल्याला सारांश रूपानं सांगायचं झालं तर पडेल ती कामं करणे गरिबीमुळे चिंचुके खाणे सत्वर भाकरीसाठी मेलेले कुत्रे ओढणे महारोगी म्हातारीच्या ताटात नाईलाजाने जेवण करणे संडास मागे जाऊन भाकरीचा तुकडा खाणे मेलेल्या जनावरांचे हाडे गोळा करणे आणि त्यातून थोडीफार पैसे जमा करणे निसर्ग निर्मित खड्ड्यातील पाणी सुद्धा सरांना पिऊ न देणे जोहार मायबाप जोहार असे भाकरीसाठी ओरडून ओरडून आवाज दिल्यानंतरही 
भाकरी का तुकड़ा न मिलने गोटा जवरच जोपने बैला ने तुड़ने कुत्या मसाचार तुकड़ा पहुन तो कुत्या तो कल्पना सर डोक व तसा प्रयत्न के कुत्रा अंगा यो अशा प्रकार के अनेक प्रसंग जेवी या आत्मकथना मध्य वो अपने अंगाला शहारे आयाशिवा रहते नहीं मित्रों अशा अनेक घटना प्रसंग प्रई सोनकंबड़े सर या समाज व्यवस्थे जीयता आर्थिक विषमता अधिरुखित आठवनी पक्ष मे का दुख दैन्य वेदना आती बाहर व्यक्त होने हो आठवनी पक्षी या आत्मकथना जी प्रस्तावना लाभली ती मे ज्येष्ठ साहित्यिक बाबूराव बाबूल प्रस्तावित मनत कि दलित साहित्या महत्व वाढ़े हे पुस्तक है आठवनी पक्षी या आत्मकथना भूके की मुख्य भावना है गोष्ट पार्टी पुस्तक दिवस तू भी मानूस है बाबड़ी की साल उपाटी शिकार चेलमा आठवनी पक्षी रुड़ा आठवन शावनी की उंटावर का प्रवास कथा व्यथा पैशाला एक दगड़ देवा तुझा आशीर्वाद गाँव का गोडवा अशा कथात अपला जीवनपट भारतीय समाज व्यवस्थे समोर एक रोजी जेव हे आत्मकथन आले मराठी साहित्याला खूब मोठे हादरे सुद्धा या सुधाणी मिला ले ले लेखक खूब जीवना मध्य संघर्ष के हाच संघर्ष हाच संघर्ष या देशातील समाज व्यवस्थे का संघर्ष है सरानी जे जगल एकटा प्रई सोनकंबड़े ही जीवन नौत तो यह समाजा मध्य जो वंचित पीड़ित शोषित समाज है या समाजाने ही जीवन प्रवास है अशा या आठवनी के पक्षी या आत्मकथना मध्य जीवन या देश समस्त भारतीय वी वाचाव यी अर्चना मेरसकर जो प्रयत्न के तो प्रयत्न अतिशय अभिनंदनीय है धन्यवाद The book Atwanin Se Pakshi portrays the harsh realities and the fundamental sorrows of life. This autobiographical narrative depicts the horrors of caste system and economic inequalities. This narrative reveals the struggle for finding a way out of the discriminations based on caste, the marginalization and the disrespect experienced in life. Yet at the same time the desire for education and the aspiration for welfare of not only the self but the entire community another important characteristic of this book is that despite facing great injustice son kamre has no harsh feelings for anyone rather he makes respectful mention of those who sympathized with him the multiple layers of sorrows a detached attitude towards these sufferings and the use of authentic dialect for expression has made this autobiography stand out in marathi literature this book received the sahitya academy award in 1983 and was included in the syllabuses of several universities the book has been translated into 11 languages including english french japanese and other indian languages do read atwanin se pakshi that is considered an important specimen of dalit literature in the next episode of granth yatra We shall discuss a book that gave a new direction to the genre of literary essays. Until then, keep reading.